Introduction, Accounting, Learning and Online Communication. My father told me when I went to college that I needed to take an accounting class. I enrolled and went the first day. I didn't understand a thing that was being said and dropped the class. I really regret that decision. I should have stuck it out and learned the basics of accounting, but I took the easy way out. Georgina Bloomberg. Accounting was the course that helped me more than anything. Julian Robertson. Welcome to Act 11059, Accounting, Learning and Online Communication. This study guide is the central document you will need to read and engage with in our unit. It is written by me, Martin Turner. It is great to have you on board. I'm the primary unit coordinator. Along with the teaching staff, our role is to orchestrate a valuable and challenging learning environment for you as we together learn about accounting, learning and online communication. We, your teaching staff, just love teaching first year accounting, both for people studying accounting degree and for those studying other degrees. In our unit, some people will be very excited and looking forward to studying accounting, perhaps for the first time. There will also be others who may feel they have little or no interest in accounting and who are only doing it because it is a compulsory unit in your degree. If this is you, you may be feeling nervous and worried about studying accounting. You may be concerned you will find accounting boring or uninteresting to you. You may be worried accounting involves numbers and maths may not have been your strong suit at school. And you may be concerned you might not be that motivated to study accounting and may perhaps fail our unit. Indeed, some people studying a degree other than accounting may have delayed studying our unit until the end of your degree, even though you should be studying it at the very beginning of your degree in first year, because you have been so worried about studying accounting. If you are feeling this way, do not worry. You will not be alone. There will be many people in our unit feeling worried or fearful about studying accounting. The good news is this is an introductory accounting unit. It is not difficult, but rather an opportunity for you to gain an introduction to what accounting is. If you come with me on the trip of this unit, I find almost everyone should at least pass. And the exciting thing is that you will have the opportunity to gain some valuable insights of your own into accounting. There may be some things in this unit that may seem new or surprising to you at first. Do not worry. I've taught many thousands of students in first year accounting at universities in Australia and New Zealand. I understand the adjustments you may need to make to this type of learning, which may be new to you. In this introduction, we'll discuss what the unit is about, accounting, learning, and online communication. We will see we can gain a valuable introduction to accounting. This is something with real value for any career in business. We will also look at how to study to develop our own understanding about what accounting is, rather than simply rote learn material we do not properly understand. And we will see how we can grow our skills in online communication to help us connect meaningfully with information and people online. You will have the opportunity to study in a way that is personal and flexible at times and places to suit you. You will be able to interact with information and others online each week, whenever and wherever you wish. We will look at how to better interact with others in our unit across Australia and elsewhere in the world. Together we will learn about whether accounting can help us or perhaps hinder us to better understand what is really going on in our firms. Now, let us begin by first looking at the learning tasks in our unit. I.1 Learning Tasks 
Any difficult task seems easier if you break it down into manageable steps. Claire B. May and Gordon S. May. Don't say you don't have enough time. You have exactly the same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller, Pasteur, Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson and Albert Einstein. H. Jackson Brown, Jr. In this section, we will see that we will have the opportunity to explore what is accounting and to ask ourselves, is it what I think it is? We will also look at an overview of some of the key learning tasks in our unit, many of which will involve us using our own listed company. And we'll see what people do who do well in our unit, as well as those who do not. And we will see what sort of time commitment we will need to make to studying our unit this term. First, let us have a look at what relevance accounting might have for business. What is accounting? About half of the chief executive officers, CEOs, of listed companies in Australia have accounting backgrounds and about half the directors of Australia's listed companies. Indeed, for Ryman Healthcare, a company we will be looking at together during the next few months, its two previous CEOs were accountants and before that chief financial officers, CFOs of the company. Although the current CEO of Ryman Healthcare is not an accountant. Why is it that people with accounting backgrounds are so dominant in our business community in so many ways? Why is it that the four largest accounting firms, Price Waterhouse Coopers, PwC, Ernst & Young, EY, KPMG and Deloitte are multi-billion dollar businesses and four of the largest organisations in the world with combined global revenues in excess of $150 billion? And why is accounting so important in business? Isn't it just about a few nerdy people who lack basic interpersonal skills and who seem to like numbers and sitting in darkened back rooms being bean counters? That is, people staring at the numbers and forgetting that what we are interested in is the business. Well, in this unit, you'll have the chance to ask yourself, what exactly is accounting? And what is its role in business? and whether knowing something meaningful about accounting might be important for me in my business, investing and professional career. Our own listed company. In our unit, you'll be given your own listed company. Your company may be from Australia, New Zealand, UK, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Africa or Canada. Your company will use international accounting standards, so we can together make sense of our firm's accounts from a range of different countries, as all our companies will be following the same accounting rules. Your company may have exotic and well-known international brands, or it may be a business completely unknown to you. Either way, the central question we will explore is whether our firm's accounts can help us, or perhaps hinder us to better understand what is really going on in our firm. You'll be given your own company at the end of week one at 5 p.m. on Friday. This will be available in the Find Your Company file in the assessment tile in Moodle. You will also receive an email to let you know when it is available. In our unit, we have no exam. This will be great at the end of term. If you are studying other units with exams, this will allow you to focus on preparing for those exams. But the trade-off, and there is always a trade-off, is that there are a series of assessments spread evenly throughout the term. This means in our unit, you need to work steadily each week. That is right, every week. Major assignment, assignment one and assignment two. 
Having assignment one, step one, due on the first day of the second week, scared me to start with, as I know I like to leave things till the last minute. But with the unit only starting five days ago, I haven't had much time to put it off. Maddie Roberts, previous student of Act 11059, written at the end of week one. The key assessment in our unit are two major assignments worth a total of 95%. Assignment one, 25%, and assignment two, 70%. And each assignment is built into several steps with due dates spread throughout the term. These steps include writing your key concepts and questions, KCQs, about the readings from the study guide. This will usually be due before we study the part of the unit relevant to that reading, to support you to complete this reading before we study it. This will help you to engage with and discuss with others different aspects of the concepts and ideas we will be looking at. One exception to this are the readings for week one. We ask you to submit the KCQs for the introduction and first chapter of the study guide on Monday, week two. You'll need to quickly get going in our unit, as each step in the two assignments builds on the one before, and with each due progressively through the term. For example, assignment one is due at 11 a.m. Monday at the beginning of week five. In addition, step one of assignment one is due by 11 a.m. Monday, week two, and step two is due by 11 a.m. Monday, week three. Step two of assignment one involves you setting up your personal profile on Moodle and setting up your blog. If you go to the unit introduction tile in Moodle for our unit, you will see the weekly schedule. Click on this and you'll find the topics we'll be studying each week. The readings each week from the study guide and when the assessments are due in our unit. You'll see there is quite a bit happening in our unit every week, starting in week one. Interaction with others. I feel the best way I learn something is explaining what I learned to other people. Because when they ask me questions about what I'm explaining to them, I either answer them with what I know or restudy what I don't know. Chantel Cadlick, previous student in Act 11059. You will quickly, quickly realise that interaction and discussion with others in our unit is critical to complete the assessed learning tasks in our unit. Indeed, it is essential to help you develop your own understanding about key concepts in accounting and about what accounting is. Our unit Facebook page, MS Teams, the various Moodle forums and our blogs are key vehicles we will use to connect with others in our unit, no matter where we are in Australia or in the rest of the world. It is great to have you in our unit, wherever in Australia or elsewhere you are studying with us you'll find there are a great group of people to interact with. As we all have different companies, we can share our work freely with each other and discuss aspects of our assignments without any concern of people copying our work. You'll find we all need to understand for ourselves the key concepts we will be studying so we can apply them to the specific situation of our own individual company. People who do well. Each six credit undergraduate unit at Seeker University requires an overall time commitment of an average of 12.5 hours of study per week, making a total of 150 hours for the unit. Handbook. Click on Assessment Overview tab, Recommended Student Time Commitment. This unit is designed to support 150 hours of learning and study by you. It is possible to get a good grade in the unit if you commit 100 to 120 hours in the unit, and it is difficult to pass the unit if you do not spend at least about 70 to 80 hours. Our Moodle site is open two weeks before term starts. We have 12 weeks in term plus a one week study week during term. 
The last assignment, assignment two, is due on Monday in the week after, week 13. There is no exam in the unit, so after you submit your last assignment, there is nothing more you need to do in our unit. So this makes a total of 15 weeks, two plus 12 plus one weeks, available for you to study our unit. If you spend 10 hours in each of these 15 weeks studying and learning in our unit, that would be a total of 150 hours, 15 times 10 hours. Alternatively, if you did little or nothing in the two weeks leading up to the start of term and do not study in the week break, then you would have 12 weeks to study. If you spend 12 and a half hours per week studying and learning in our unit, that would be a total of 150 hours. People who do well in our unit will think about how much time you have each week to give to learning in our unit, when you will do this and where you will study. Once you have done this, you can then plan how you will allocate this time to different learning tasks in our unit. Reading the study guide, completing each step in assignment one and assignment two, attending classes either on campus or online, watching videos and interacting with others in our unit. There is a weekly study plan in the weekly tiles in Moodle for each week, which can help you plan your studies each week. Start early. Also, people who do well in our unit usually start early. In the two weeks leading up to the start of term, they make sure they have set up their personal profile on Moodle right at the beginning of term. See assignment one, step two. They will also set up their blog early and get started blogging. They will also visit other people's blogs and post a high message, introducing themselves and giving a link to their blog and inviting people to visit their blog. As they start to network with others, they will find some interesting and possibly like-minded people with a similar work ethic studying our unit from around Australia and elsewhere. You can find links to other people's blogs in the blog links forum in the learning community tile in Moodle. And well before it is due, they will complete writing their key concepts and questions, KCQs from the introduction and chapter one of the study guide, assignment one, step one. People who do well in our unit will start early and be off and running at the beginning of term. Let us now see what people might do who do not do well in our unit. People who do not do well. People who do not do well in our unit might do little or nothing in the two weeks before term starts and very little in the first two to three weeks of term. They then realise they are behind in our unit and spend the rest of the term trying to catch up, which is often not a fun experience as our unit keeps moving forward each week. And the teaching staff in our unit know exactly who are doing this because we can see the amount of activity of each person on Moodle each week, including the two weeks before the start of term. But if this is you, do not worry. You can catch up in our unit, but you will need to put in quite a bit of extra effort and time for a few weeks to do this, to make up for not having put in adequate effort in the early part of our unit. Besides starting late, the other thing people do who do not do well in our unit is to attempt to study our unit alone. The Lone Ranger approach does not work well in this unit. This unit supports all of us to interact online with each other at any time and from anywhere in Australia and elsewhere. Being actively involved in these interactions is essential. In this section, we've considered there may be more to accounting than simply a nerdy sort of record keeping. Indeed, there may be something to learn about accounting that may be quite central and helpful in my business or investing career. We've seen how we'll explore many of the foundational ideas and key concepts about accounting by studying our own listed company and its financial statements. We also saw the importance of getting started early in our unit, as well as the need to interact effectively with others. In the next section, we'll look further at the critical importance of interacting with others in our unit, 
whether face-to-face -face or online, and the tools, support and tips that can help us do this. I.2. Interact or perish. You don't learn to walk by following rules. You learn by doing and by falling over. Richard Branson. In this unit, you will learn by doing. If you want to simply sit by and watch others do the learning, you will be disappointed by what you learn. You will need to read the study guide for yourself and look at your firm's website and annual report. You have some learning tasks to complete spread throughout the term that involve your own company and its financial statements. Everyone has a different company. No one else has your company, just you. I have Roman Healthcare and you have your company. As you will be learning by doing, there will be some judgments you will need to make. The real world has shades of grey in it and is often not completely clear cut. To help you make these judgments, the great tip for success in our unit is to interact, interact and interact with others. And did I say it enough times? You'll need to interact with others in our unit. As we study accounting together, you will do about 90% of your learning through your interactions with other students in our unit and with our teaching staff. Lone rangers tend not to do very well in our unit. And why is this? People who try to do the learning tasks on their own will find they will hit roadblocks, lots of roadblocks. You'll find difficulty with the next step in something and may then find yourself spending a lot of time trying to figure it out on your own. And yet, for most issues you will come across with your firm, many others in the unit will be facing exactly the same issue with their firm. As you each have different firms, you are free to share your work with others and to discuss issues you are facing. We have even built in some of this interaction into the assignments where you will have the opportunity to review and comment on each other's work at different points in the term. In the workplace, we all need to be good at working with others. We need to be genuine team players, able and willing to help each other to achieve the objectives of our organisation. And increasingly, this teamwork and cooperation is online, as well as face to face. In this unit, you will have the opportunity to experience working cooperatively and effectively with others. Invest time early in the term connecting with others in our unit and getting to know people. Share your work and look at ways in which you can help others with their work. This is the key to success in our unit. And here are some tips to help you interact with others in our unit, wherever we are. Tip number one, read the study guide. My first tip is to read the study guide each week. As well as this introduction, there are eight chapters in the study guide. As you can see in the weekly schedule, there are readings each week. Read these chapters before the beginning of each week. Each chapter is about 10,000 words, divided into four sections of about 2,500 words each. I find I can read two sections in one sitting, a total of about 5,000 words, and this takes me about 30 minutes. I'll then have a rest, do other things, and then come back, perhaps on another day, to read the remaining two sections. You may find a different approach suits you. For example, you may read one section at a time each day. And there is no need to understand or remember everything when you read the study guide. Rather, the study guide is designed to give you a first look at some of the key concepts we are looking at and for you to ask yourself, some questions. So how long does it take to read eight chapters of the study guide plus the introduction? Well, you could plan on it taking nine times one and a half hours. That is about 15 hours in total. If you do not normally read very much, or if you do not have English as your native language, you may find you need to perhaps double this figure. 
The reason it is important to read the study guide regularly through the term is that when you interact with others in our unit, you will already have some familiarity with the content we are studying each week. This will give you a basis for your discussion with others. If you have not read the study guide for the week, then you will simply be asking others questions and looking for help. And people will quickly feel they are being used to help you when you could have really found out the information you need from the study guide. Trust me, other people will not appreciate it if you do this to them. Tip number two, complete your KCQs. This brings me to my second great tip. To help us read the study guide, embedded in our two assignments are some tasks, such as step one in assignment one. These tasks may be new to you. What you need to do is while reading each chapter in the study guide, jot down your key concepts and questions, KCQs. These will be different for each person and are what particularly stands out to you as important, interesting, surprising, confusing, or difficult to understand. When you have completed the reading, you can then go back and refer to your KCQs as you write the step in your assignments. Tip number three, start a free blog on WordPress or Wix. One of the first things for you to do is to set up your own blog. This is a key tool to help us communicate with others and share our draft work. See the guidance in assignment one, step two, on how to set up your free personal blog on WordPress or Wix. If you are familiar with another blog software, you can set up your blog using that software if you wish. And remember, a blog is simply a type of website. We can use the terms blog or website interchangeably. Once you have your blog up and running, make sure you visit lots of other people's blogs. When you visit, make sure you leave a comment introducing yourself and saying hi. Others in our unit will be glad to hear from you. You can find links to other people's blogs in the blog links forum in the learning community tile in Moodle. And remember, if you prefer to use another blog software, you can set up your blog using that software if you wish. Tip number four, join our unit Facebook page. One of the first things you should do is join our unit Facebook page. It is a closed group, so you need to ask to be included in the group. Both your unit coordinator, other teaching staff and students in our unit will be posting quite frequently to this Facebook page. And do not forget you can search our unit Facebook page for keywords to locate posts on the issue you are particularly interested in. To search, type keywords into the search this group box near the top of the Facebook page. Usually, most important issues have been discussed on our unit Facebook page at some point, so it can be a great source of information and guidance. Also, MS Teams and the discussion forums on Moodle can be great. And you can search these forums as well by keywords to find the relevant posts you are looking for. Tip number five, check out exemplars from other students. It can be a great idea to check out how some past students completed the assessed learning tasks in our unit before you complete them this term. You can find these exemplars in the assessment tile in Moodle. You can also look at these after you have completed each learning task and they can give you some great ideas on how you might approach the next assessed learning task. These are my great tips for how to succeed in this unit. Remember, the key is to interact with others in our unit and to start early and work steadily each week through the term. This is not a unit where you can back end the work towards the end of term. It is just not designed that way. Having considered how to do well in completing the learning tasks in our unit, now we will look at the learning element of our unit. In this unit, we will have the opportunity to strengthen our understanding and capabilities about learning 
itself to learn how to learn in a much more effective way than we are perhaps used to learning in formal contexts such as university or school.